Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, in the law of the Old Testament, did a woman who'd been raped really need to marry her rapist? While I rarely address Old Testament law, a lot of people seem really interested in it, especially as it relates to the moral character of God, and one person in particular brought this one to my attention in response to that topic. He said that if God is moral, I should please explain rape, since in Deuteronomy, the victim of rape is condemned to stoning, or is forced to marry the rapist. Now, of course, my first thought upon hearing this was, Really? Is that right? Well, not exactly. Here's what the book of Deuteronomy actually says on the topic. If a man have espoused a damsel that is a virgin, and someone find her in the city and lie with her, thou shalt bring them both out to the gate of that city, and they shall be stoned, the damsel because she cried not out, being in the city, the man because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, and thou shalt take away the evil from the midst of thee. Deuteronomy 22, 23-24 as you can see, what's being described here isn't rape, it's adultery. It's a situation in which a man and woman are both involved in an adulterous relationship, and she is implicated in the crime by not calling for help to save her from this adulterer, proving that, whether secretly or otherwise, she also wanted this evil action to take place. This is made clear by the next few verses. But if a man find a damsel that is betrothed in the field, and taking hold of her lie with her, he alone shall die. The damsel shall suffer nothing. Neither is she guilty of death, for as a robber riseth against his brother, and taketh away his life, so also did the damsel suffer. She was alone in the field. She cried, and there was no man to help her. Deuteronomy 22, 25-27 as you can see, in cases where she's a blameless victim, there's no punishment at all for her. The only thing that I would consider harsh about this is that to many of us the death penalty is horrifying. But for anyone who's ever had adultery committed against them, it's easy to see it as a grave evil which should be dealt with sternly. In the case of God, it's all the more important to remember how serious sin is, and how desperately important it is to convince people not to commit them. But... What about the passage having to do with marrying your rapist? If a man finds a damsel that is a virgin who is not espoused, and taking her lie with her, and the matter come to judgment, he that lay with her shall give to the father of the maid fifty sides of silver, and shall have her to wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all the days of his life. Deuteronomy 22, 28-29 Stoning is not mentioned in this passage, certainly not of a rape victim, and the obligation of marriage is described as an obligation for the man. He must wed her even if he doesn't wish to, and may never divorce her. This is because the people of ancient Israel couldn't depend on having all sorts of extra money to support themselves with, and single mothers were essentially doomed, as they were completely unable to make enough wealth on their own to support a family, nor could they feasibly raise their child fatherless. In fact, they shouldn't raise a child fatherless, and neither should we. No child deserves to be punished in that way, for something which isn't their fault. The only exception to this would be if the father of the woman decided to accept financial responsibility for her child, which is covered in another Bible passage. If a man seduce a virgin not yet espoused, and lie with her, he shall endow her, and have her to wife. If the maid's father will not give her to him, he shall give money according to the dowry which virgins are wont to receive. Exodus 22, 16-17 here we see clearly that the woman didn't need to marry the man, only do what her father says. However, it's important to keep in mind that neither of these verses refer specifically to rape, and all of them are related to the moral obligation that men have to take responsibility for the consequences of their actions, so that women don't need to bear the burden of time or money associated with raising a child without a father. All of these laws existed not to force women to marry rapists, but to protect women and children from the economic consequences of not having a breadwinner in their family, or any chance to acquire one. Men should be moral enough to care for the children they father, and the women they decide to be with, even if they don't really want to. And that holds true today as well, even if we don't do stonings anymore due to not living in caveman times or whatever. Next time, a new season for a new topic I've wanted to go into for a while. The History of Heresies. See you then. 
That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.